Hello, I'm a Mac. And I'm a PC. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. He sees you when you're in sleep mode. He knows when you're awake. He knows when you've been bad or good. So buy a PC and not a Mac this holiday season or any other time, for goodness sake. Oh, come on. Oh, what? What? I thought those were the lyrics. I mean, that's how I learned it. Hello! And welcome to the Goldcast, the best 30 plus minute album conversation you're going to hear all week long. I'm your attractive host, Airfon Elijah. Welcome, everyone. Joining me today, the chiseled Buster Hein. Buster? Oh, chiseled. Hey, man. <laughs> We've got the very genteel Alex Excelsior Heath. Alex? Hello, good chap. And at any moment, <laughs> the very cuddly Leander Caney could be joining oh, us. He ditched awful. out right before we hit record, and he said, do you mind if I join later in the show? To which, of course, we tried to say no, but he hung up abruptly before <laughs> we could communicate that. So, sorry. He might be joining at any moment. We'll, we'll see what happens. What do you guys think? Yes or no? Buster? Uh, I'm going to give him 20 minutes before he comes in. <laughs> you think it's 20? I think he's not showing up at all. Alex, what do you think? <laughs> not at all. Okay, I think Alex and I are going to win this one. In any case, we'll do the show with Adam, and we're still going to have a lot of fun. we got a lot of great stuff to talk about. Stay tuned to the end of the show. We're going to be doing an all-new Faves and Raves, and I have a really fantastic pick this week. That uh, It's something I've been reviewing, and I really love it a lot, so excited to tell you about that. Before we hop into all the fun, I want to say thanks to Linda for supporting this episode. You know, with Linda, you can learn to run your business better, become a Photoshop ninja, learn how to create music on your iPad, and so much more. Linda now has over 4,500 courses for you to choose from, and they're offering our listeners now, uh, it used to be a seven-day free trial, now it's a 10-day free trial. You can learn all you want for free for 10 days. Head on over to lynda.com forward slash cultcast. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com forward slash cultcast. It's the best place to go when you're trying to learn something. And and the first place I always start, I want to thank Linda for supporting this episode. Okay, guys, let's start with HBO. Go. Buster, am I going to you with this? I actually erased it. (laughs) Oh, yeah, you're you're coming over here. So tell me the news about HBO Go this week, because I uh, I saw a great gif of Joffrey doing a slow slow clap. (laughs) I don't know what he's clapping for. Well, we've talked about HBO uh, will release like a standalone service in 2015. And yesterday there was news that it'll come out in time for the Game of Thrones season five premiere in April, uh-huh. which which should be pretty huge because then you can, you know, watch the whole thing without having to download it illegally. You can just get a subscription which to none HBO. Which do, yes, but... Uh, yeah, I never would. <laughs> <clears throat> Every Monday morning after it comes out. <laughs> uh, no spoilers, by the way, please, guys. No spoilers. I only finished season... What season are we on now? What's, what's coming out in April? There's a season five in April. Okay, so I must have just fe- finished season three? Oh, really? Gosh, am I that far behind? Yeah, you better hurry up, man. Holy you, moly. You got to see the dragons. They're bigger now. So um, uh, do we have any idea on the price, on, on how much this is going to cost or anything? <sighs> they still haven't said the price. Um, I think people were talking like 15 bucks a month last time that the rumors first came out. Uh-huh. Um, it'll probably be priced similar to, yeah, Netflix, uh, probably a little bit more hmm. than Hulu, which Netflix, they got this new Game of Thrones uh, competitor called Marco Polo. I think that comes out today. I'm pretty excited about that. It's a show? Yeah, a show. Mar- <laughs> you called a- it a Game of Thrones competitor. What is it's it? Like, it's like a mythical... It's like a Game of Thrones knockoff. It's got Marco <laughs> yeah. Polo in Asia. It's got like all these uh, feuding families trying to get the throne from Kublai Khan or something like uh, that. Instead of dragons, is there some other mythical creature? Yeah, lots that... of nudity and <laughs> it's stuff not too. A, it's not a competitor. It's a ripoff. Yeah. <laughs> so really, you think they com- they created this to kind of compete with the Game of Thrones series? Oh, totally. Yeah. I think they That's had hilarious. Uh, been pretty open about that. Wait, is that out today? <laughs> I think it comes out today or the 12th. I can't remember which day. Huh. You know, I got to say, I actually haven't really watched a single Game of Thrones or not Game of Thrones Netflix original series. I haven't watched any of them yet. Have you oh, you haven't cards? watched Get House of Cards? I haven't started that yet. Oh, it's so good. Uh, Peaky That's Blinders really good. is good too. I've heard that one's good as well. I need to see that. 
Um, yeah, I, heard, I hear that's good. I and actually have a new finished. black too. That one's good as well. Yeah, you haven't watched that? No, I literally haven't watched any of them. I have them all on my queue, but just to kind of give you guys an idea how far behind I am, I still have two episodes of Breaking Bad left. Oh, you haven't <laughs> finished Breaking Bad? I haven't finished it. It got so intense that I that I kind of took a short break from it, and then you know what happens when you start taking a break from a series or a video game or something, and then mm-hmm. you kind of get far away from the storyline, and you're not really sure what's going on anymore, so... I really wanted to go back and revisit the entire last season just so I can kind of get an idea of what's happening and be re-immersed into the story because I, I don't want to watch the last two episodes and be so clueless as to what's happening that I kind of miss yeah, the... Uh, like the, the, I want it to be cathartic, you know, when I watch it. I want to be like, oh, yeah, that was a great ending. And now, oh, I guess I know how it ends now. Yeah. So, well, so I, got, okay. I got two episodes of, uh, of that left. Anything else to say about HBO, Buster? Nah, not really. Just that I'm super stoked for it to come out. I've been revisiting uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm on HBO. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you guys have never watched that show. It's Larry David. He's one of the co-creators of Seinfeld. Mm-hmm. And that mo- that series is so intensely awkward to watch that I can't stop watching it. It's hilarious at times, but sometimes it's so awkward because the, the, the situations he gets himself <laughs> into are so bad that it's actually kind of hard to watch. I've been revisiting that, and I've also been watching some of HBO's documentaries. Mm-hmm. And I got to say, HBO, this is my first year having a full year subscription to HBO, is probably one of my favorite things in 2014. Oh, yeah. I've been watching uh, Sopranos lately, mm-hmm. catching up on all that, which is awesome. Uh, I need to watch that. I haven't and, watched uh, that either. Don't worry. Oh, you, you guys should watch it. <laughs> and The Wire, of course. And I just finished Deadwood, which was a really great show. I mean, they have so many awesome series. It's ridiculous. The HBO has a kind of magic about them. They're mm-hmm. able to create shows that no one else can create. They're kind of like Apple in a way where they can just do things that no one else seems to be able to do creatively. Um, and everything they touch Churns the gold. I was watching this documentary series they did where they pair really talented young artists with with artists who are really um, experienced, like violin players or uh, painters or something. And they put them all in the same room together for, you know, like a week and have them perform or do artwork together. And I was like, this is one of the most brilliant documentaries I've ever seen. They have about eight or about eight of them on HBO. If you mm. have HBO, check them out. I think it's called the Young Art Young Artists Master Series. And I, I wasn't even expecting to watch very many of them uh, last night when I just kind of ran across them. And I ended up watching four in a row. They're really short. They're half an hour each. But check those out if uh, if you have HBO. Alex, actually, no, I'm going back to Buster with this one. Let's talk hey. about IBM, <laughs> Apple, and their special friend partnership because they. They produced something together that I think the whole world should know about, Buster. So they produced something special. <laughs> it was very special. Very special. For what, businesses, mostly. It's, it's all about <laughs> business. So we talked about this IBM-Apple partnership in the past. Yeah. yeah, I think they announced it in July that Apple and IBM were going to like help each other you know, grow into the business world. And so today they announced like the first 10 apps that IBM's made for businesses. And they have... Basically stuff for all kinds of industries from like retail stores to like help uh, manage inventory and Mm -hmm. do sales suggestions, insurance stuff I don't really know about, uh, passenger apps for flight attendants, uh, government apps for cops, just like a ton of crazy stuff that like you and I probably will never use. This stuff isn't available on the app store either, is it? Oh, I don't even know how you download it. I don't think it would be. (laughs) It's got to be like enterprise. No, it's, de- download it's deployed it. by yeah. It's deployed internally by okay. by companies. So mm-hmm. IBM, you know, helps them roll it out. I was like, oh, dude, I want the cops app. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what you would do. With that. Look up perps. Well, you get notified when there's like an incident in the area. That'd be pretty cool. It's like the police radio of 2014. Yeah, I mean, just tons of apps that, you know, hundreds of businesses and stuff. I mean, if you don't, you you won't use it in your personal life, but, you know, your work might pay IBM to, like, integrate it into everything that you do at work. It'd be like, pop up a notification, and it's like, warning, a sexual deviant is near your area, and I look up, and Leander Caney's walking towards me. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, he's there! Oh, he's back! Oh, Oh, shoot! (laughs) We lost our phone. 
We we lost. I know. I was just thinking that. I saw his picture, his creepy serial killer Skype profile picture pop up, <laughs> staring what? into my soul. Yes, yours. <laughs> where you're like leaning into the camera. I couldn't uh, believe it. You showed up so fast. Yeah, I know. Sorry. We were taking bets. About oh, how long it would how be? long it would take you? Yeah, like yeah. Next week. my bet would be yeah, my bet was next week. <laughs> He'll show up sometime next week, uh-uh. or we'll be uh, we'll be wrapping up. We'll be doing the, like the, like the music <laughs> we'll be playing. <laughs> Leander will show hey! up. Yeah, hey, everybody. Yeah. He'll be yelling at his kids in the background. <laughs> uh, okay, well, let's move on. Let's talk about Sony. Ooh. Alex Buster. So the big news this week was that Sony got hacked big time. And one of the funny things about this whole thing is we actually got a bunch of secrets revealed uh, as far as the Steve Jobs movie. So a bunch of Aaron Sorkin's emails to different people about who he wants to play the role and the movie itself got leaked. But before we talk about that, what happened? I, I, I'm not privy to the whole story. So when, when, when people say Sony got hacked, what exactly got hacked and, and who, who hacked them? Uh, well, did you hear that Korean hackers hacked Sony to like take down uh, to like get them to stop n- to not release the <laughs> did interview? You, did you do that, that interview movie. <laughs> Hello, who this? This is the Secretary of Communication for North Korea. Our Supreme Leader Kim Jong Un is interested in doing an interview with Dave Skylark. Oh my God! We will meet 50 kilometers west of Dang Dong, northeastern China. Did you just say China? And did you just say dong? <laughs> yeah, I, I heard that that. So the interview with Seth Rogen and isn't it a movie where they're like, you know, they're like are hired to you kill know. Kim yeah. Jong Un. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's James Franco and Seth Rogen. Yeah. And so the hackers, they basically, you know, accessed all of Sony's computers and they data dumped everything onto the Internet, like thousands of documents and emails and you know, so the press has just been going through all the information lately, and in that info is some of the details behind the Steve Jobs movie at Sony. That you know, it's been just a shit show, basically in casting. Yeah. That movie has. So, if for anyone that listens to this show, you know we've talked about this several times. They seem they they can't they can't actually get their actors to stick. So they we have all these rumors of actors that might be playing or might be playing characters in the movie, and then they end up you know. Um, distancing themselves for whatever reason and they lost their director too right danny boyle was going to direct it and now no. he's not no he is, oh, uh, is he david still? fincher was gonna direct my it. bad my then, bad alex sorry <laughs> and then there's like all these emails that like show like the internal bickering on why like david fincher left the project and all kinds of crazy stuff you know yeah that goes on behind this, hollywood yeah the studio heads were hating each other. Like it's it's like really heated. Um, and then so there's finally, stuff about just the business of Hollywood that got leaked out. Yeah, just yeah. drama about you know people uh, trying to like strong hand one another, and like Fincher wanted a ton of money, and and Sorkin really wanted Fincher on board because they did the Social Network together and won the Oscar and everything, and he wanted mm-hmm. that same team again, and Fincher wanted too much money, so they ended up not going with him. But and like, gosh, all the actors that were interested. Um, Toby Maguire, Matthew McConaughey, Bradley Cooper. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I just want to point out that when we did our the people we don't want to play Steve Jobs segment, <laughs> I think I mentioned Matthew McConaughey, and we all laughed hysterically. But he was he was seriously in consideration for the Steve Jobs role. He w- well, uh, he wanted them. To he put wanted it. In okay, that would have been a there. travesty. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, Tom I, Hanks wanted do, Tom Hanks wanted to play John Scully. I think that would have been like the most odd <laughs> like casting choice was Hanks as Scully. You know, uh, I don't think so. I think I Hanks could have pulled off Scully, but I, I mean, a, as Steve Jobs, Matthew McConaughey, I absolutely cannot. See no, it. no way. There's yeah. no all way. All right, all right, all right, all right, <laughs> all right, all right. Was <laughs> J.K. Living was. <laughs> <laughs> we're about to build a computer build um, that computer <laughs> yeah, yeah it's it's weird i mean jeff daniels now is supposedly playing scully from the newsroom i think so. jeff daniels is amazing yeah. and i would love to see him play as john I, scully i think that I would think actually be a good, good role fit. for him yeah yeah what do you think of tom cruise as Steve yeah Shaw? okay that was, the, that was the biggest thing is that sorkin's top choice he basically wrote the part with tom cruise in mind <laughs> and this the studio heads were, were not having it they could not see him doing it but sorkin was like he was perfect for this role 
Okay, can, before we talk about is Tom Cruise right for the role, can we take a quick vote with a yay or nay? I'm going to go yay. Alex? Uh, yay. Buster? Nay. Leander? Yay. Oh, oh wow. Everybody <laughs> wants Tom Cruise? What's wrong with you guys? Well, what's, what Sorkin said is he, he said, watch Lions for Lambs, and it's basically an audition for jobs because Hanks is doing so much talking and stuff, and it's another you know, Sorkin movie. And um, I haven't even heard of that movie, Lions for Lambs. Yeah. It came out in like 07. Mm-hmm. Um, Who's in it, Cruise or Hanks? Cruise. Um, okay. We were yeah, talking about Tom Cruise, Leander. Does that change your vote? Well, no, because Alex just said Hanks. Oh, oh, I meant to say Cruz. Sorry. I know. That's what I'm uh, like. What? Gosh, no. Alex, don't say <laughs> wrong things. No, but uh, <laughs> this, this <laughs> dude. <laughs> Especially when with me. And Lions for Lambs, I never even heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I mean, it had Meryl Streep and Robert Redford in it and, uh, and Tom Cruise. Was that Cruise. courtroom drama? Yeah, a courtroom drama, basically. And uh, he said for Danny Boyle to watch it to see how the, the crew's that's such a it's such a good jobs audition. Uh, and he's he said that it would be a dazzling performance for Cruz to be to be jobs. And um, he said he was uh, going to be really. I, I don't know. He had a lot of good things to say about him. And then the studio was like, he's too old. We can't do it. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. I, I never would have even considered Tom Cruise in this role. But as soon as I heard that he was being considered, I was like, this actually makes a lot of sense. Tom Cruise. I know there's a lot of people that hate on Tom Cruise. I personally believe he's a fantastic actor with a huge range. He's been in a lot of amazing yeah. movies and he's really good at yelling at people. Yeah. So yeah. like, you remember that role that he did in, in Tropic Thunder? <laughs> what was that studio yeah. exec's name? Where he's Les just Gross- like, Les Grossman, yes. Yeah. He's, he basically yeah. just needs to be Les Grossman to be Steve Jobs. He just needs to yell at everyone oh, yeah. and tell them how he's right and they're wrong and how you need oh. to yeah. spank their asses. <laughs> spank that ass. Yeah. <laughs> Snap it, whip it, whip it around. Swig it past your knees. Oh. Get past your knees. <laughs> I'm talking G5 for Pekka. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, that role could have been so incredibly awkward for him, but he pulled it off. And I'm that like, was he could pull off role. that role, right? That was his comeback role because he was coming off of like Oprah and all that craziness. And oh, everybody, I, f- I forgot about that. Yeah, everybody wrote him off as this you know nutcase, and then he did Tropic Thunder, and everybody was like, wow, this guy's actually funny. <laughs> uh, but there's one thing from this email uh, that I really wanted to read from Sorkin. Uh, he says, look, I wouldn't cast Clint Eastwood, but if I saw Tom Cruise <laughs> flying around the backstage corridors of Symphony Hall, I wouldn't think he was too old. I would think it would be a dazzling performance. So, I mean, he, he was, think, he was I, all over it. I think he's right. And look, t- speaking of age, Tom Cruise probably rubs like the finest oils into his skin every night. He probably looks younger than all of us, including you, Alex. Uh, and the guy's, the guy's 50. Yeah. He probably well, looks like he's 18 in real yeah. life. And there's also the stuff about Bale. Uh, the studios were re- the studio execs were really excited about Christian Bale because he's such a bankable actor. You know, he's like a blockbuster type actor who can also you know act actually. And uh, and then when he backed out because he couldn't really find the part that he couldn't find himself in the part apparently. And then uh, Boyle wanted Fassbender because they'd worked together. And Sorkin hated Fassbender. And he Sorkin like, said uh, he didn't even know who Fassbender was. Yeah, so I don't even know who he is. That's surprising. He's like, He's like, this is insane. And then later he was like, well, you, you know what? This will make his career. Because, you know, Sorkin and, the, and some of the execs, are, the way they're talking about this movie makes me really excited to see it. They're saying it's like a profound, like, you know, Oscar-worthy movie. Um, but he's like, he'll get nominated for everything in this movie. will you know, make him and stuff. So If it's a good movie. If it's a good movie. Yeah, if it's said, a good yeah. movie. But uh, it sounds like it very well could be, even with all the crap that's gone on. Um, Sony's marketing exec had a lot of really good stuff to say about it. Um, that's on, if you go look at Gawker, uh, they have, they have a really nice rundown of all the bickering. And then this email, <laughs> they uh, sorted through all the emails so that you don't have to, they'll just tell you the higher level stuff that you really want to know. Yeah. You don't have to go and, re- and read it, all these leaked emails. After reading the script, he was like, this is layered, thoughtful filmmaking. And it's like the kind of film that we like, we owe it to our audiences to show and like all this stuff. Like it's, you know, basically like one of the most brilliant movies of the 21st century is basically wow. this Sony guy is saying. Um, it's a meditation on Jobs himself. It's one of his early computers closed end to end. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. Uh, what if they got, they leaked all this stuff just, to, just so that the movie is more hyped? <laughs> because I heard that North Korea actually did not hack Sony and they're, they're not totally sure who did it. 
Yeah, I've heard that too. But yeah, they're not sure. Although when they're when they're saying in broken English that the newsroom is or the interview is like, well, the newsroom too is a, but that the new the, the interview is like a disgrace. Yeah, stopped. Then uh, it sounds like that. <laughs> the and, hilarious thing is what Buster. Oh, I was just gonna say, there's too much dirty stuff from Sony that's come out of it to have them do it themselves. You know. Yeah. Or, or are they? Is that is that exactly what they want? I don't know. Do, my, do, fav- do. my favorite other detail from the Sony hack is all of the alibis that all these A-list actors go by when they're like registering at hotels and stuff. Oh, that's and, the stuff that you uh, that we need to know. Jessica Alba's is cash money. <laughs> cash <laughs> money. Yeah. So whenever, come whenever, on. No, I'm serious. So whenever she gets a room so or something, fake. it's under cash money. <laughs> no, it's not. I, what are some of the other ones, Alex? Uh, yeah. I need to Harry Houdini. Yeah, I need to look it up. That's got to be one of them. I would just do like another celebrity's name. I'd be Rick Moranis. <laughs> yeah, what I'm doing. <laughs> no one would ever get Rick Moranis. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, for people that don't know who Rick Moranis is, he played uh, Dark Helmets. Yeah, in in Spaceballs and then Honey I Shrunk the Kids. I heard that in 1996 or 1997. His wife passed away. He had two kids and he just was like, I don't want to do this anymore. And he just stopped acting and he hasn't acted since. Yeah, I heard huh. that same story. Yeah. And I think his he wife died a of cancer. suburban soccer mom or something. Maybe. So yeah. Drove the kids around in his minivan. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, he obviously had his millions and he, you know, had a, a life changing experience when his wife passed away. So maybe he was just like, yeah, I'm done, which is, huh. which is terrible for guys like me. Cause I was hoping for a, uh, space balls to <laughs> return to ludicrous speed. <laughs> 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 I've never actually seen it. Is that a good movie? Uh, it's one of the best movies of all time, Leander. Oh, come on. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, you'll hate it. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might laugh a couple times. You'll hate it overall, but you might laugh a couple and times. It's got Rick Moranis in it. That can't it's be that got bad. Rick Moranis. It's got a lot of popular actors um, whose names I can't recall. It has that dude from like from like uh, uh, Police Academy who does all the sound effects. I'm having trouble with the radar, sir. What's wrong with it? I've lost the bleeps. I've lost the sweeps, and I've lost the creeps. The what? The what? And the what? You know the bleeps. <laughs> the sweeps. You know what I'm talking about? I haven't seen those. <laughs> oh, never mind. Okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah. name some obscure British black and white movies from the forties. I'll, I'll be on the same page. Yeah, I'll try to create my favorite list of movies oh, it's got from the John 1920s. Candy too. What are you? I'm a mog, half man, half dog. I'm my own best friend. John Candy's uh, in it. Yeah. Oh, I can't believe I forgot that one. My brother was trying to get me to watch um, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles the other day with John Candy. Yeah, so that is was, actually a good movie. It's, it's sad at the end, though. It's right? sad at the end, yeah, yeah. But it's it's very it's a very heartwarming movie. John Candy was so great, such a great actor. Guys, uh, Ice Cube's alias is Darius Stone, and <laughs> Darius Rob, Stoned. Rob Schneider's is not so good. Not so good. <laughs> Rob Schneider, because you know Rob Schneider's just getting followed around. <laughs> yeah, people <laughs> are like, "Where's <laughs> Rob Schneider staying? Oh, he's not here." Do you guys do you guys think this Jobs movie will be good? I don't know. I, I think it it's going like to be either incredibly mediocre or it's going to be great. Uh, just, the leaks have kind of really opened up my eyes as to like so many movies in Hollywood seem like they are very dependent on just people like the people that make them like wanting them to succeed, you know? Mm-hmm. Because there's so much like bickering, like oh Angelina Jolie is an egomaniac whore, and like this email, and I hate David Fincher and another one. It seems like everybody just backstabs to you know get their own way and derail <laughs> projects just because f them. Yeah, so I don't know. It's got it's got a lot of problems. I think it was amazing to me to read that Aaron Sorkin said if the movie's good, it will win all sorts of awards. Showing even he doesn't have control yeah. over the quality, right? He only has no. one piece to it. And right. you, like if you watch the credits at the end of a movie, you see how many people worked on yeah. one film. I mean, These it would books. probably be impossible to to to, yeah. to predict. Apparently the script is phenomenal though cuz like these emails are saying people are saying like this script is a perfect 10 like wow. it could be killed in the wrong hands <laughs> of wow. a director but like they're saying it's like it's the kind of thing that gets in you and stays with you for days and I've really? heard that most A-list yeah. actors are just in search of a great script because great scripts are so rare. 
Yeah. It, this Sony marketing guy says uh, it's insistent upon itself. It's relentless. I kept begging for someone to walk outside for some daylight for an opening, but Sorkin is so brilliant with the structure and he just keeps you, he just like batters you like over and over. Like there's no, it's just supposed to be like really intense and dialogue driven <laughs> and very smart. <laughs> That's it. I'm know. going, I'm going in dressed in my full Steve Jobs uh, attire. I'm wearing a <laughs> mock turtleneck, my, my uh, old jeans, my new balance. I'm going to really get ready for this movie when I go see it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's interesting. Does it, the, the script hasn't leaked. No, the script hasn't. Wouldn't that be something? No, it hasn't. That'd be terrible uh, actually. But they're saying it's just like, it's almost claustrophobic. Like it's just, it's probably, they're like, they he's, one of, one of the emails course. was like, we have to avoid making this like a constant close up on Job's face because that's what it easily <laughs> could be. <laughs> Although if it's Tom Cruise, that could be, that could be highly entertaining. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, hey, let's go ahead and move on. We actually have other stuff we're going to talk about and we're also going to be doing our faves and raves at the end of this episode, Leander. Oh, I've got a great one. That's going to oh, blow it out of the water. Really? Yeah. This is, talk about being in a locked room and intense, super, <laughs> you know, like, uh, this is going to be an emotional experience. When I talk <laughs> Leander about got it. a new uh, vaporizer. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Actually, I could, I could talk about that too. I had an interesting vaporizer <laughs> experience of the weekend. Story? Oh, jeez. Did no. I tell you this one already? No, I don't think sounds so. Sounds like I did. But okay. it sounds like something that we might need to hear. Uh, before we uh, continue, though, let me go ahead and say a very big thank you to lynda.com. You know, every time I do this segment, I update how many video courses uh, Linda has. When I think when we first started, they had about 2,700 high quality video courses for you to choose from to learn anything on on the planet. They have so many different courses. Now they have 4,577 video courses for you to choose from. And they span the gamut. You can learn virtually anything. You could learn how to code. You could learn how to get started in the songwriting business. So do you, do you write songs? Are you musical? Do you want to learn how to sell your songs? Linda has a course for that. You could learn how to build a photography business with David Hobby. And the reason I'm calling out the instructor's name on this one specifically is because David Hobby is really well known in the photography world. He started a website called Strobist, and he was just this normal guy who was learning photography, starting a photography business, and he taught people how to light. That was his big thing, how to light with inexpensive lights, like those small strobe lights that you put on top of your camera, and how to create really beautiful pictures with inexpensive lighting gear. And actually, that's how I learned a ton about what I know about lighting is through David Hobby. So when I saw that, I was like, wow, it's incredible that they got somebody of his caliber to actually teach how to make money and how to build a photography business. Because David Hobby isn't just like some college professor. Like he actually went through and did that. He built a really successful photography business. He's very well known now. And, uh, you know, he's a professional photographer. Linda.com has so many courses for you to peruse. You can watch them on your iPad. You can watch them on your Mac. You can watch them on your iPhone. Everything that's spoken within the different courses is totally searchable. So if someone says something about a Photoshop tool and you're like, I can't remember how to use that tool, you could search and actually find the exact spot to go back and revisit and watch it later. Linda.com is excellent. It's the first place I go when I want to learn a new application, a business skill, a marketing skill. I couldn't recommend it any more highly. I think it's absolutely fantastic. And now for our listeners, instead of a seven-day free trial, they're doing a 10-day free trial. So you can go to lynda.com, that's L-Y-N-D-A.com forward slash cultcast, and you will get a 10-day free trial to learn anything. All of Linda's catalog will be available to you for free for 10 days. You can try it out. Couldn't recommend it any more highly. Lynda.com forward slash cultcast. I want to thank Linda for supporting this episode that's l-y-n-d-a dot com uh, okay where should we go next guys we talked about sony oh we're going to talk about this i this i almost said ipod <laughs> <laughs> ipod the lawsuit <laughs> not the ipod uh lawsuit buster uh or alex do you one of you guys want to explain what this lawsuit's all about because i'll be honest i don't even know uh it's basically isn't it that uh, Apple used iTunes and the iPod to like monopolize the MP3 market early on and they basically uh, broke compatibility with other services like 
real player i think is that what it was called and some other that ones was one of them yeah yeah um to to keep people from being able to use it with itunes and the ipod and like they were really hard with their like stringent with their drm and they didn't license it and all that stuff uh and basically that they use that to kind of like get a leg up over everybody you know what's and, interesting when i hear people talk about how apple's closed and they have a monopoly I always think it's it's their own ecosystem. There's plenty yeah. of other players you could well, buy. There's other marketplaces you could you know participate in. So yeah, how is th- that a monopoly? I think the argument was that they it, it's that they hurt like other services, like mm-hmm. other services. But and then on their from their side of view, I think like in the case of real player, they like reverse engineered Apple's DRM and kind of broke the law. But it's been it's been kind of crazy because they had that taped desp- disposition of Steve Jobs right before he died where he's talking about it and uh, all these media outlets are trying to get the course to release it publicly and they're probably not going to. And it's just, was it, it's was got, it Steve draw Steve jobs in a very frail state. Like, yeah. It's like him. Like it's him, you know, when in the period when he had uh, stepped down. So it was like within a year probably of his death and wow, uh, so he was very thin and yeah, and frail okay. and just yeah. kind of, and the, I don't know, Apple's saying that it's ridiculous that, you know, this used to get this much attention. I think the craziest thing is that they haven't really had any plaintiffs. Like all the plaintiffs, they're, um, they're, they, they were trying to find people that had iPods that were bought within the window of the lawsuit. And like mm-hmm. all of the plaintiffs didn't actually have them. So like mm-hmm. mid trial, they realized that there was no plaintiff to make the case for. <laughs> so there, and, the, and the lawsuit is still ongoing. I mean, how do yeah. you have a lawsuit? Well, there's without- one, there's- there's one still standing, right? Yeah, there's, so like there's one. One, one yeah. plaintiff got dropped out because apparently she bought her iPod <laughs> two years after yeah. know, they were alleging that these, these things took place. So the judge chucked that out. And then it goes, well, there's one plaintiff left. But turns out that um, the iPod that they had was bought for them by one of the lawyers. And it's like, what? It's crazy. Huh. Yeah. Isn't that, wasn't that the case? Yeah, and then, well, yesterday, I guess they flew somebody in last minute from Boston, an old ice dancer, to testify because yeah. she had bought hers <laughs> within the time frame. So, like, so this they is just like a, a, a trial looking for a plaintiff? Yeah. yeah, I mean, and it's been going on for almost a decade, the trial has, and they're trying to wrap it up this week. And Wow. <laughs> It's just a mess. It's crazy because it's like it's an ice dancer representing like 8 million iPod owners. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and it's like Apple, it's like I think they're facing, what is it, like a $350 million fine or something like that? Yeah, it's which peanuts, is, but the lawyers are getting peanuts. super rich off of it, well, right? This, I mean, isn't yeah. this the whole point of this, right? Is the lawyers are charging $400 an hour to do all this research and do whatever lawyers do. And then if they win, probably Apple has to pay them, I would imagine. Either well, that yeah, or they're yeah. going to well, get... They, a they take fifty percent straight away, right? Is it fifty? I think so. It's, and, then, it's and then the other fifty 30. gets divided up between all the plaintiffs. And if it's a class action lawsuit, there's thousands. So everyone gets a dollar, <laughs> right? And the lawyers and the lawyers <laughs> get you know two hundred million. Wow. Um, I had an iPod, you know, at one time. It was the color iPod. I used to play games on it. It felt pretty cool when I got it. But I don't feel <laughs> like I'm entitled. Or I would want anything from this lawsuit. I haven't even heard of, of, of this lawsuit. Well, there was uh, some strange revelations, right? What the one of them was being yeah. that they would they would delete that iTunes would secretly delete music yeah. that you download from other services, which was wasn't like, the what? case. It wasn't the case, wasn't it? That it was it was incompatible. It was music that had incompatible DRM, <laughs> and Apple warned them that they can't play the the file. And so then they had to reboot the iPod and the file disappeared. So mm-hmm. Apple wasn't super transparent about why the file was being deleted, but it wasn't like they were just like doing it out of spite. Like it was just incompatible with the iPod. So oh, okay. that's, that's their story. That's, that's their story anyway. We know, that, we know that DRM music, you know, from other sources plays fine on iPods now. So well, Apple was one of the, you know, jobs. It was that letter from Jobs that, um, about DRM, you know. Remember that? He wrote a right. letter about DRM right. and he persuaded the, 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 uh, the music companies to finally drop DRM. Mm-hmm. That was instrumental in doing that. So, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, all those accusations that they were closed, that it was a closed system, I think, you know, a kind of, I mean, true it was. They never, they never licensed um, iTunes to other manufacturers the way that Microsoft licenses. But they wanted to. For yeah. sure. They wanted to. That was something that came out in the trial. I think it was Eddie Q said that, that was, Apple was totally gung ho for that. And then the record labels were like, no, you can't do this. If we're going to put, mm-hmm. you know, all of our chips on you. You know, we need to be sure that this this is you know proprietary and that it's only on iTunes, and that's how we're going to negotiate. So Apple yeah. really had their hands tied. 
That's they were saying that you know if somebody brought over a song from like Real Network and they uploaded it and it somehow got into their iTunes library that the record labels could find like Apple in violation of their agreement and they could pull their songs from iTunes whenever they want. So that's why Apple is deleting the songs off I- people's iPods. In a related story, you guys know that the iPod was killed off. What was it? Three, four months ago now? I know we talked about it when it happened. The iPod Classic? You the mean? iPod Classic, yeah. yeah. Tim Cook said that they couldn't they find parts, the parts anymore. <laughs> so they just literally couldn't build it anymore. So the crazy part is, is now the iPods are going for for a grossly inflated, inflated price on Amazon, on eBay, and even like the uh, secondhand refurbished models. So the ones that had been broken and then got fixed are selling for more than they did originally on eBay now, and this uh, new story I was reading on the Guardian said that some of the uh, the new models are selling for four times their original price now, because people know that they can't get them anymore, and people really love the iPod Classic. Yeah, they're like collectors editions now, basically. Do you guys think, Leander? Do you think that that Apple will ever bring back the iPod Classic? Maybe like you know redo it in some way and, and re-release it. Mm, let me think about it. Mm, no, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> never ever. It's like, are they, they going to come out with a record player? Oh, that'd do be cool. Tape, 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 uh, tape the tape, dude. Vinyl coming back, dude. <laughs> a track, <laughs> yeah. Gramophone. Actually, no. you know what? It, I think an Apple gramophone would do very well. <laughs> I, I'd buy one. There'd be some some mega hipsters in their extraordinarily skinny jeans who would be delighted to buy a gramophone by Apple. So yeah, but you that, know. they're not going to. Yeah, the iPod is never going to come back. There so, was a, you know one of one of the early ones. This I think it was the second generation one had some amazing um, analog converter, digital to analog converter in it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That was um, it was a really high end chip, and for some reason it ended up in like in the second generation iPod. And this um, audio files were using them as um, you know uh, music servers. Really, they were replacing these massive like rack systems with these these small iPods. The trouble is, is that the um, the headphone jack was no good. So there was a company that was soldering on some kind of an, an optical, a Toslink uh-huh. output for these uh-huh. iPods. <laughs> so they became huge collector's items. They were selling for thousands. I bet you they still are. I wonder if they're still trading. I, I'm I, sure I, they probably are on eBay. That stuff lasts back forever. A few years now, though. But yeah, maybe. Hmm. I mean, those electronics last a long time, right? I mean, as long yeah. as it still works, why not? Right. And audiophiles are willing to spend all sorts of crazy money on stuff. I wonder what the size of the drives is, though. I mean, at the time, they must have been... Um, 60 gigs, maybe? No, oh, less than that. 20, I'll bet. 20 or 30 at most. Oh, you said this was second generation. Yeah, because it went from... The original was 5 gigs, right? Yeah, I think so. And then it... I mean, the, did it go to 10 or 20? I think it jumped to 20. So they must have been 20 gigs. I think the one I had was 20 gigs. Yeah, and it was four hundred dollars when I bought it. <laughs> Twenty gigs. I mean, that's only just a bit. Yeah, right. I know. But and now it's like, you know, I mean, can you even buy? Um, you know, I mean, well, it's a sixteen. Like, so, you know, it's comparable to the sixteen gig iPhone. Yeah, which everyone knows is 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 way too small for any kind of real practical purpose. Well, especially after the OS takes four gigs. <laughs> yeah, right. I would be really into if Apple created a iPhone or an or an iPod with those higher fidelity chips in them, I would spend more money to buy something like that. Well, like a Pono? Kind of, yeah, kind of like, like, <laughs> like Pono level. Gun. Yeah, exactly. I would. I've been would dabbling in high fidelity audio the last three or four months. I've been trying out different headphones. I know, but it's um, all rubbish. And I, I've, been get a good pi- in high f- I've been dabbling in high fidelity <laughs> in high audio. Fidelia. And let me just say, it makes a difference. It makes, a difference. it makes a difference. It makes a difference. It has. I mean, I'm oxygen free. I'm putting a uh, grape upon on on things and eating that now. It's a it's a whole it's a whole new life for me here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, make fun of it if you will, but I have to say, it makes a big difference. Like. Having a really yeah. high end pair of headphones, especially when you attach it to a headphone amp and a high quality piece of audio, it's incredible. The stuff that you hear is so much better than what you hear through your white wired, uh, you know, earbuds on your iPhone with a 128 kilobit encoded MP3. And I used to, I grew up playing in bands, so I'd play instruments and and um, I'd be in a band room. You'd have all these instruments playing around you. So maybe for me, I, it's nostalgic because I hear stuff 
that I used to hear when I sat in that room for all those years playing with all these other people. And there's just things that you hear that you just, they, they get stripped out when you encode them um, in some low quality fashion or you use, you know, lower end earbuds. So yes, I've been dabbling, Alex. <laughs> it's like one of the days when you played Triangle, right? In the school band with the, everyone's horrible, and, horrific, out of tune and, instruments. And timpani, you know, those two uh, <laughs> things that you cling together. Yeah, right. You and know, you're going to get, wow, when you put on your $4,000 earphones with your <laughs> headphone app, it really takes you back. I want to hear all the different resonance of the timpani. <laughs> uh, in any case, let's go ahead and move on to the last segment of the show an all new Faves and Raves. And faves and raves. And faves. Oh, but before we do that, I want to mention something really quick. So there's a website called Pocket Gamer, and I'll include the URL in the show notes. They're giving away a free uh, iOS game every day up until Christmas. And I was I wanted to mention this because I was looking at the games that they've been offering, and the games are all four and a half star plus rated games. So they've been they've been working with the developers to make the games free only for 24 hours. Each day is a new game. So if you're interested in getting some great free games, make sure you check out the link in the uh, in the show notes. And uh, every day is a new game. It's been great. I got a couple of good ones so far. So I wanted to uh, give that a shout. Okay, faves and raves and faves and raves and Buster, you take this one. Faves. Ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so wow. can't uh, wait to hear that through a pair of high end <laughs> headphones. The totality of that. I can only experience that in high fidelity. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear every inflection in the in the resonance bouncing across yeah. the walls. No and beats for me when I listen to that. <laughs> what are you talking about? Beats are high fidelity, aren't they? Oh. Ask, we'll ask the new ones, uh, apparently. The new ones are supposed to be pretty good, right? Uh, I'll believe that when I hear it. Let's ask Dre in Vegas. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dre, are the beats high fidelity? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's his PR go to answer. Okay, Faves and Raves, a segment where we pitch our favorite tech and apps and then vote on which one's best. This, is, this could be interesting because I, I was saying before you joined Leander that I thought I had a pretty good one. You're saying you've got one that's going to blow everything out of the water. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling it starts with an S and ends with an Onos. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll see about that. Does yeah. anyone want to go first? Buster, Alex? Uh, I don't know. Mine's not going to win, so I may as well go okay. first. Take it away. <laughs> Sacrifice, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, sacrificial lamb. Here I go. Um, uh, gosh, I, I really don't have anything that good, except that I've been playing uh, Telltale's games. They just came out with a Game of Thrones game, and it's like in the style of the Walking Dead series. Yeah, um, which was really good. And then this is fantastic. It's like the first installment of, I think, six episodes of Game of Thrones that that T Telltale's doing. And uh, and you can get it on like Xbox or, or uh, you know, PlayStation Network, but it's also on in the App Store. It's like I think it's like four or five bucks. And uh, it's like a role playing game. And if you're familiar with the Walking Dead series, uh, which were like really highly rated and reviewed and people loved them. Those games it's, were it's, outstanding. Yeah, it's basically yeah. that but it's game of thrones. So you're making like all the decisions in real time. And it's like, it's like a movie's playing out before you. I think it's like two or three hours from start to finish. Um, but it's got voice, you know, all of, a lot of the voice actors from the show are in it. Uh, it's got, you know, um, uh, George R. R. Martin, you know, war, you know, gave some input on it and, um, it's set around the red wedding scene, which I won't spoil, but, uh, if you know, you know, and you're, you're like a house, you're a smaller house. Um, uh, that's serving, I think, the Baratheons, and then you you kind of have to make the decisions as you go, like who do you support, who do you kill, yada yada yada. So, uh, it's really good. It's really like it really like I don't know sucks your time away. Like a it's like an hour later, I feel like it. I just started playing, so check it out. And then there's going to be I think uh, f five more over the next few weeks. They're going to release them. So pretty Does, good. It's five bucks for the base game and do they charge you more after that? Or is it just five no, minutes like, and you get all of them? The, what they're doing, cause they're, they're such big files cause it's all like video and stuff. And, um, it's a lot of like media. So they're, they're doing each episode as its own game like they did for walking dead. So there's going to be six games released. And the first one is what you can get now for, and each one's going to cost, I think four ninety nine. Okay. Um, so you're going to pay what? 30 bucks for all six. Yeah. 30 bucks. Yeah. Wow. That's kind of spendy. For, 
Yeah, but yeah, it's but you know it's like three times it's like that cost you sixty bucks. Oh right. yeah, for sure. And it's like sure. th- it's thirty hours of playing. You know when you look so you at get it. a lot out of it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Buster, Buster, or you want me okay. to go next? All right, go oh, yeah, I can go. I can go. Uh, I've been trying out these new camera lenses for the iPhone for a mm-hmm. moment. Mm-hmm. For the iPhone six and six plus, and yeah. they're pretty awesome. Uh, they're really big, though, is the thing, and they're kind of pricey, like a hundred bucks each. Did you say that it's Moment? Yeah, MomentLens.co okay. is their website, mm-hmm. and so instead of like the Olo Clip, which uh, you know kind of like folds over on to the top of your iPhone or whatever, this one it has like a mounting plate, so you can just screw it onto like your iPhone six camera lens. And it'll give you like a wider angle for like like an eighteen millimeter lens, or uh, they also have a telephoto lens. Change it to like a sixteen millimeter lens. Yep. And like they're super nice quality uh, glass lenses. They're much bigger than the Olo clip, uh, but I think as far as like distortion goes, there's not as much around the edges as the Olo clip. So mm-hmm. it's been really nice to use on pictures and stuff. Which uh, what's the zoom range on those? Are they just fixed lenses or? Yeah, they're fixed lenses. Fixed, so, yeah. so the wide angle is like an eighteen millimeter lens, and the uh, telephoto lens is two times zoom. Hmm. Yeah, I used the wide for the first time on the six a couple of days ago. If you go to my Instagram, Alex Heath on Instagram, you can see it's like the second photo I think in my feed I used with the wide, and it's really nice. It's really good quality. How much are those, Buster? A hundred bucks each. Hundred bucks each. So every lens is just a hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Each lens is a hundred bucks. The thing about it is, though, I mean, it's it works well with a case. Unlike the Olo clip, you have to take like an eye, right. your case off each time. But when you do use it, like you're kind of committing to using the moment lens for a long time because you uh, stick the mounting plate onto your iPhone with glue, and each time you take that off, it pretty much ruins the mounting plate. Ugh. So. So if you do make the choice to use it, you know, you got to keep it on there for a while. Okay. Uh, I'll go next. Leander, we'll give you the honor of last. Best for last. Best for last, since you seem to think that you have the best. Wise decision. Um, So you guys made fun of me for for, uh, dabbling in the world of audio fidelia, but... (laughs) I got a new uh, pair of headphones recently, and those who follow me on Twitter probably heard me talk too much about this already. I always used to think, just like you guys, I'm like, dude, the whole thing is stupid. You don't need to get high-end headphones. You don't need to have high-end earphones. They all sound the same. And actually, I was a huge fan of the EarPods. When those were released, they really wowed me, and uh, I did jazz hands, and I've been using them ever since. So I got my hands on a pair of Sony XBA Dash H1 earphones. And I think they're normally about 150 bucks, but I found them on eBay uh, for about $61. And for whatever reason, I think maybe Sony's liquidating these things right now because you can find them on eBay brand new, sealed brand new in the box for like $60, $70 right now. I use these things for the first time and I was blown away. They're They're probably at the top of the list as far as best sounding earphones I've ever used. They sound fantastic. All the music that I that I usually listen to sounds much better. I'm hearing things in the tracks now that I've never heard before. Uh, the Timphonies, Leander, sound wonderful. <laughs> I'll bet. Yeah, and they're very good at, at, at isolating noise. Um, the other thing that I like about them is they have a smooth cable. You guys know I'm into smooth cables. So they don't get tangled. My, my iPhone earbuds always get tangled in my pocket, and I have to spend two minutes you know, detangling them every time I want to use just, them. These things yeah. just fall apart. They're so easy to use. And then lastly, and this is very subjective, but it's still worth mentioning, is I think they're very comfortable, and they're very uh, good at, at, at isolating noise. So a lot of times when I wear earphones, I don't know if I have a problem with my ear canals or something, they make my ear canals ache. And eventually, after 30 minutes, I have to take them out because they just hurt. These ones I've been able to wear for an hour, two hours, three hours, and they just stay in and they're comfortable. My ears don't ache. They come with different size ear, ear tips. So, uh, you know, if you, get the, if you get the pair and you put them in your ear and they don't work, you can switch those out. And they also come with some sound isolating, some better sound isolating ear tips. I think the ones they come with standard uh, or that are fitted on there when you take them out of the package work great, but they also come with some, some ear tips that work even better than those. So as I said, about 150 bucks, um, if you just get them at a regular store, if you do some searching online, especially on eBay, you could probably get them for 60. Wire cutter, Used ones? 
Uh, no, they're brand new. Brand new. Wire cutter well, rated them pretty as waxed. <laughs> they all come pre. They're very shiny. <laughs> they have little yellow bits all over them. Uh, wire cutter rated these like their highest rated earbuds under two hundred dollars or something, which is actually how I found out about them. And I was like reading the reviews, and people either loved them or hated them. They're not. They're not highly reviewed. People either really like these or they think they're garbage. And I was, mm. I was like, let's just take a Light shot base. and see what happens. And I'm on the high end. I think they're fantastic. Mm. Sony XBA Dash H1 earbuds. Without further ado, the winner of this week's Faves and Raves, <laughs> <laughs> Leander oh, Caney. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> At least he thinks so. Leander, what do you got? Well, this one's going to be a total shocker for everyone because it's the Microsoft Band. You know their fitness wow. band? Wow. I, uh, so, I got to play around with that. You like it, huh? I do. I really think it's great. Yeah, I've been wanting one. Yeah, um, it's, um, it works really, really well. I've only had it for a while. It works great with uh, the iPhone. So tell people, what is the fitness band for those who haven't heard of it? So it's a, it's a fitness band, and, and Microsoft, it's only been out about a month, I think, and it was in limited supply, and finally it's sort of really just, just starting to hit the, the stores. Mm-hmm. Um, and it came as a total surprise, like, what, a fitness band? Mm-hmm. Um, and right, of course, before Apple's doing the iWatch. Um, and it's, um, it's a fitness band that's got a built-in heart rate monitor that uses light. It shines a, a light in, you know, to measure your pulse, mm-hmm. but it also does notifications um, and some basic sort of like, you know, alarm clock, uh, weather type functionality. But, um, uh, and it's a fitness tracker. So, and it has GPS. And it, it works looks without, really good too. It and it works without your phone. Yeah, it does. It looks really good. It's got a really nice screen. The interface actually incredibly is, is clever. It's really nice. I mean, setting an alarm on it is really easy to do. It's not clunky. Um, it's actually got a sense of humor. Um, some of the, the notification messages when I I, you, I turned on the sleep timer last night and it went good night which made me laugh and um, <laughs> <laughs> so it tracks your sleep it does a whole bunch of stuff and of course it's, it's sensible you can even pay with Starbucks on it you can put a Starbucks card on it and you can tap it against the um, you know the uh, the register at Starbucks to pay for your your, your disgusting latte mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I like the notifications on it though because um, it uh, you know this is ironic for a fitness tracker I'm lying on the couch on Sunday. And the phone rings. <laughs> and, the, and then, you know, here it comes up on my, my tracker. So I don't even have to get off the couch to go see who's calling me. You know, you can see it right there. And can if you, you, do, can uh, you answer the phone from it? No. Okay, um, it just shows you who's ca- calling. I think you can with Windows. If you have a Windows phone, you can. Yeah. But as far as I know, you can't do it with... It's got a microphone, but you can't do it with iOS or Android. Can you it's browse the that... internet on it? Can you browse web pages? No, no. Because I'm that's not... what I really want to do on a, on a one-inch screen. <laughs> I don't want to do that on my computer. I don't want to do it on my phone. I really want to have the smallest screen possible. <laughs> well, you know, this is this is what the, I think this is where Microsoft's taken a, a leaf out of um, Apple's book, and in, uh-huh. in that they they haven't done any of that. It's very focused, uh-huh. even though, it, and, but it actually does a bunch of things, you know, but it, but it's very, very simple. And I think, you know, it's quite, it's actually really good. And it has me real high hopes for the, for the Apple iWatch, for the Apple watch. I'm like, will I ever say, <laughs> stop saying iWatch? You know, I, 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 the functionality of it, I think is, you know, cause I, I get in texts, I, I turn off all Twitter and all that kind of stuff because it's too noisy, mm-hmm. but you know, with, with, and, and email, but, but with texts, with, we're getting texts from people, you know, cause oftentimes you're in the car, right. And you can feel the phone, my phone buzz in my pocket. Yeah. And I'm sort of curious. Like you can just glance at it. You go, oh, okay, you know, and it, it keeps you in contact. I find I, it's my preferred way to see what's going on with all the alerts I get on my phone. Wow. Yeah, so I like it a lot. I think it's really good. High praise. How much is it? One ninety nine. Okay. Is there are there different models or is it just there's just one? Different sizes. Okay. Like, that's all. How, yeah, but how, and, like, and, oh, and the fitness tracking is really good too. Do you find it comfortable? Like I went to the store and tried it on and was going to buy one. I just felt like it was just a little bit too bulky to want to yeah, wear it. Yeah, it was day. really big and clunky, I thought. I mean, it looked you, good, but... Yeah, no, I, I haven't had any problem, but I gave it to uh, uh, Lewis here, tried it on, and immediately it was hurting his wrist. He has um, carpal tunnel oh, and okay. issues. And so he was like, oh my God, it was like putting him in agony. He had to take it off immediately. <laughs> do do you wear I, it like inside your wrist, like with yeah. the screen inside? Yeah, oh, yeah okay. I've been wearing it on the inside, yeah. Huh. That's yeah, probably a good idea. That way, too. when you get some really vulgar text from somebody, yeah. <laughs> a little kid standing next to you at the grocery like, store doesn't like get my to see son. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah my right. son sends me a message. <laughs> He's been sending some shockers recently. My goodness. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> Do tell. <laughs> no, I don't want to. Um, it's a PG friendly podcast, right? That's so. true. Yeah. We'll put it in the after show. That's where we put all the vulgar stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, people okay. were, um, I think it was too clunky. I mean, you know, I'm a. Uh, it, it's not too bad. I mean, w- w- I was wearing the um, the Fitbit one too as well, 
uh, one of their recent ones, Chash. That's actually a really nice piece of hardware as well, but it's not as functional as the as the as the the band. Yeah, and I think they put you know like uh, now I'm kind of like you know my expectations because I've worn Jawbones and Nike. Uh, what's it called? The uh, Nike the one. Band. Yeah, yeah, which uh, and they're all pretty good for what they are. But now it's like you know I think the game's been upped. Yeah, I think the the Microsoft band is kind of like exactly what Nike should have made two years ago. Right. Like, it's just I think it's you know the exact type of wearable I want. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because okay. it's going to be superseded by the, by, the, by the watch, I think. But yeah, you know you're going to throw it out when the Apple Watch comes out. Well, you know what? I don't. <laughs> You'll think never wear so it again <laughs> because the, well, band has some stuff that Apple Watch doesn't, like the GPS <laughs> tracking, so you can take it on a jog and know how. That's far true. You're at That's without. a very good point. And yeah. so I've I've been really debating like just getting a band and not worrying about Apple Watch to the second generation. And the one thing that Apple Watch doesn't do, doesn't do, which is kind of a deal breaker for me, is it doesn't track sleep. Yeah, that yeah. too. I mean, and all the that. other fitness devices do that, and this is the one that doesn't. It's kind <laughs> of surprising. <laughs> what? What's that? That's a deal breaker? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Doesn't the band battery life last like two days as well, Leander? Yeah, the battery life's been really good. I haven't actually um, run it out yet because I... I uh, I've been plugging it in when I get to to, to work. I got the pl- the charger here, so uh-huh. just pop it off and leave it there for an hour or two until I go for lunch or something. I put it back on. So, I it, it, yeah, it went. Um, you know, I I had it on all last night, and when I came in, I don't know, I I, I didn't check, but I think the battery was like halfway down. So yeah, it's at least a couple of days. The GPS feature of it is really nice. That's one. That's one of the other things about the Apple Watch that kind of bugs me is is that you need to have your iPhone with you for it to do that. As far as we know. That mm-hmm. it can turn out to not be the case, but it doesn't have GPS in it. We know that it relies on your phone for that. So, I mean, Buster, I know you said jogging with your iPhone six plus wasn't a big deal, but I'm kind of like mad. Oh, if I could leave it at home, <laughs> yeah, yeah it'd be way better. I mean, who wants sure. to jog? I mean, you should see my running shorts. There's not much room in there from a <laughs> junk, let alone an iPhone six plus. <laughs> oh my goodness! How did I get involved in this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> They're very like uh, you know, very very short. So, okay, let's vote. Yeah. <clears throat> or Alex, do you want to say something else before we vote? No, uh, no. You're no, gonna talk about no, your I'm... short shorts and how they're shorter yeah, than mine. I was going. We all just assume, <laughs> we all just assume that, Alex. <laughs> no. Okay, um, I'm gonna vote. I'll go first. I'm gonna vote for yours, Leander. Surprisingly, you were right. Go. That is a very good pick. And cool. having used that one, um, I was really interested to use it more. And I, and I really want a new fitness tracker. So that kind of sounds like something yeah, it's that killer. maybe... It's, a, it's a really good gift, I think, for Christmas. You know, I was going to get one for my daughter. Mm-hmm. I think she'd actually like it. And, and, you know, they're smart. It works with, with Android and with uh, iOS, um, as well as Windows Phone. That was smart of them to do that and not just be yeah. like, this is Windows Phone exclusive. Because right. yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, they yeah. have like 1% of the market, right? No one would buy it. It'd be done on arrival. Right, exactly. Yeah, so it's yeah. cool that they made it so work so well with iOS. And the software's pretty good. Yeah, the app is pretty good. Okay, cool. Like so um, you talking about it? <laughs> no, 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 please, really don't. I thought the fitness tracking was really good. It, <laughs> it actually tracked when I did a like a weightlifting workout. That it, it had all my heart and how many calories I burned for all that kind of stuff, which the other ones, the pedometers, don't do. Did you look down after you lifted some weights and it said, "LOL, is that all you can lift?" <laughs> 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 this device is not suitable for use with children. <laughs> right. uh, I, feel, I, I feel like that anyway, like at SpongeBob. Remember that one when he goes to the gym and he's got these two little uh, fluffy toys at the end of a tiny bar? and he, <laughs> That's exactly how I feel. All right, we're losing Leander. Leander, I don't know if you have something uploading and downloading, but it's good because um, the show's almost over. So just stick with us. Alex, who's your vote for? Uh, I'll do Leander. Yeah, <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. He's got two. Buster, you could end this. Yeah, Leander's gonna sweep oh, it. Oh <laughs> wow! I really want one, man. We That's all just crazy. voted for a Microsoft product. I know, but I think Mike, like the band, it's like one of those signs that I think Microsoft is making a resurgence. Yeah, been, I mean, it's, they've really impressed me like the last couple months since Bomber's been gone. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, finally, Bomber's gone. Let's release some cool stuff. Yeah, I mean, they're really open. Like, the band works with everything. Their apps are now, you know, on iOS and Android. I yeah. think, you know, they, they've got a good strategy that it's they're starting to It's definitely an interesting strategy that they're, that, 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 that they're developing over there, huh? Like, just being available on all the devices in a really high-quality way. Yeah. Okay, Leander, are you still there? Yeah. Okay, your audio just got a lot better. Who? Okay. I mean, not that it matters, but who's... Would 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 be your pick? <laughs> Do, can I not pick my own? 
You can't pick your own. <laughs> you already you already won. Just give someone a a runner up award. All right. Well, I'm inter- uh, I guess the Sony. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm kind of interested in that. <laughs> you should you should get a pair. They are they. I w- I would be interested to have you get a pair and then tell me if you think they're garbage or not. What do you mean, get a pair? Well, you should get a pair. Of <laughs> I've already got a pair. Thank you. Uh, are we still talking uh, about earphones? I, yeah, I don't like it. I don't like earbuds. I don't like them. You know, like I, I've had tons of earbuds, and I've had yeah. some high-end ones over the years. I got sent a pair, of really fancy ones, years ago that, that were great. Yeah. But um, I don't like. You know, I, I'm more interested in over the over the ear. Are you headphones. wearing those over-the-ear headphones right now that you have in your Skype profile picture? <laughs> no, I've actually got a pair of um <laughs> No, Jim Nick those, so I gotta nick him back. Oh jeez. Uh, <laughs> just him and his wrist where he has the carpal tunnel. Incapacitate yeah. him and then take them back. The, uh, okay, that's Lewis, but yeah. <laughs> oh I'll, sorry. I'll, I'll, I gotta think of something for Jim. <laughs> I got these pigs I got these Zick Parrot um Parrot Zick headphones. Yeah. Which are really they sound great, but I've always had a problem with the battery. It never seems to be charged up when I need it. They're wireless then, yeah? Yeah, yeah, they're Bluetooth. But they do oh. sound gl- glorious. Glorious. I'm interested in the wow. Yeah. I'm interested in the lightning, the lightning uh, headphones that are going to start coming out. I know Phillips has a uh, pair coming out. Ah, uh, that's a good um, one. Yeah, yeah. Why do they do lightning? Because it's apparently you get better quality, and uh, there's some other pros uh, to it. Like uh, you can tie in with iOS better. You can like the app can do more hardware stuff, like sensors and stuff that lightning mm-hmm. supports that the audio mm-hmm. jack doesn't. So, huh. yeah, and they wouldn't need a. Um, I mean, they wouldn't need to have an analog connection, too. It would be a digital connection, which is usually much higher quality. Uh, so that can make a big difference. But they're also going to have to pay Apple to license the technology. So I wonder if that means that they're going to have to, in lieu of you know, putting good hardware into a headphone like that, if they're going to have to use that money to pay Apple to license the technology instead. Because you know, they have limited budgets when they're creating products like that. So it could work both ways. In any case... Let's go ahead and wrap it up there, guys. I want to congratulate Leander Caney <laughs> on his first ever swing <laughs> Fave and Rave win. Have you ever won before? Come on, what are you talking uh, about? Yeah, I, I guess so. Okay. Every, I win every week, don't I? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, every year in one week you win. So that's mm. pretty impressive. And you well, and I- you swept it, which is not easy to do on this panel, I've learned. <laughs> Unless it's a sweep as in no one picks yours. Those yeah. are usually the sweeps yeah, well, that go my direction. <laughs> all righty, well, uh, that's all the cult cast we have for you guys this week. If you want to come say hi to us on Twitter, we would so enjoy that. Alex is Alex E. Heath, Leander's L. Caney, Buster's BST3I. I'm at Arafon. And of course, for all the best news, reviews, and how to's in the world of Apple, make sure you're following Cult of Mac. This has been the Cultcast, the best 30 plus minute Apple conversation you're going to hear all week long. New episodes of the Cultcast come out every Thursday night. I want to thank everyone for listening, and we'll see you guys, Leander. When are we going to see them? Next time. <laughs> Gosh, what a buzz. That was the most infinite next time I've heard on this show yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Next time. <laughs> <laughs> that was much better. Thank you. Talk to me. Bustier Chani. What's up? What's happening? Getting crazy. Are you? Uh, what are you doing over there? I'm just podcasting naked today, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh I was having a vision of you dancing like in that scene from Silence of the Lambs with your with your jangle tucked between your legs. Okay. <laughs> Why? I don't know I'm why not sure why that's the first that about place. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. That's the first place my mind went. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually uh, I'm slightly embarrassed I admitted to that out loud. I'm not. <laughs>